Want to know how I got here? Let's go back to the beginning. I'm Peter Crosby. My name is Peter Sherman Crosby, an American photojournalist and documentary filmmaker who's traveled the world for 50 years. Now I'm traveling across the USA with my live-in van and a cool gravel bike. Am I crazy to answer one question about America? What the hell is happening to my beautiful country? We've got to learn to listen. We've got to learn to communicate. We've got to find a path for peace. In the last episode... Holy... Again, 27 years later. The deadly coronavirus is spreading in China and to other countries across the globe. Reports of dozens of incidents of bias against Chinese Americans in this country. Why do you keep using them? It comes from China. I think our founding fathers are probably rolling in their graves right now. What the hell happened to Megua, my beautiful country? You know, maybe I have to go back to the States. We're looking at camper vans online. I've been back in the United States now for almost six months, not feeling at home, not feeling at ease. It didn't feel like home. Racially motivated attacks targeting Asian Americans have been on the rise nationwide. The CDC finds more than 97% of patients hospitalized and nearly 100% of those who've died are unvaccinated. The belief in much of the world is that America is so divided and so angry that nothing can happen positive. He falsely told the American people that the election was not legitimate. Let's go, Brandon. I yield back. Folks, that's not who we are. We are so much better than this. What I'm trying to reconcile is my out of America point of view and experiences with my inner hope and dreams and belief in America. But first, I have my own quest to tear down my assumptions and discomfort and make a new home and start again. I dreamed of van life for years, traveling far and wide with my cozy home, cameras, and bike. For those seeking something else, the way out is out there. Long time no see. And the weather's gorgeous. This is exactly why 1,000 people per day come into Florida and stay here. This is the weather. So they can sit in their garage? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Since I know nothing about RVs, Brian showed me some basics. There's a black switch there and on the far right on the bottom. And it says LP valve and uh, a toggle switch on and off. Happy trails, my friend. I'll be muchas gracias seeing you all the way across America. Muy bueno. <laughs> Vaya con Dios! Okay. First stop, figuring out how this RV thing works. Okay. This is what we need since I don't know how to do the water or anything. Oh my gosh. I have to charge it up. Electricity, plug in electricity. Okay, gonna try and do this with the bike here. We'll see. RV reality check for this not so handy man. Lots to learn. Already have my first repair. This uh, this fell out of here. I've got to get the drill. I bought a drill. All these handy things I have to learn. Next stop, Daytona Beach. This is the first time I've got my. Uh, camera set up. Um, I don't think this is going to be optimal. Um, so I need to, I need to mount some other things around. I'm headed to Daytona for a motorcycle rally, but first I want to hit that famous beach. Ooh. 
Just such a newbie on the beach, stuck in the sand. Shore Patrol to the rescue for saving swimmers, catching thieves, or digging out newbies. This is brand new, so I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Actually, we've got a spot here that would spin into it, and I can pull right there. Oh, really? So let's consult the manual and see where that little bugger is. Well, I'll get the manual, for God's sake. You guys are amazing. You're like doctors for a dumb Yankee on the beach. Put it in neutral. Put it in drive. Silly question, do you have traction control? I don't know. <laughs> if uh, you do, if you can turn it off, because that'll engage the brakes, and it makes it hard to pull the thing off. Hold on, let me get the... <laughs> track, 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 traction. Traction control. I'm gonna try to give you a little coaching. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we're in drive. Wheels are straight. All right, go ahead, so I'll give you some gas. Okay. There you go, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Hey. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Great stuff. Because Soren, I heard these guys laughing at me. They were squawk squawking. I feel like after these guys save my ass, the least I can do is go for a swim. <laughs> Daytona puts on one of the largest motorcycle rallies in the world with races, fancy bike parades, and lots of partying. What's your name? Monday. Monday? It's like the day of the week. And you're Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. Wait, wait, wait you just got married? No. I got married when we were 17. Oh, you're Seven. kidding. <laughs> so this is what, your 25th anniversary? Oh, I forget. Yeah. <laughs> That's my road. That's my symbol there. Then I rode it for 10 years, put 100,000 miles on it, and uh, now I bring it to Daytona. It's its 30th year here in Daytona. You want to sit on it? I'm right up there. No, 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 no. Here, grab a hold of it. You right, right? What the hell are you doing down here? Marvelous afternoon for interacting with people at the motorcycle. Or is rally the right word? I don't know. It seems more, more like a show off, showcase. Parade, posing. Wearing a helmet while bicycling has saved my noggin half a dozen times. Oh, fuck. So I can't imagine riding a motorcycle at three times the speed without one. But less than half of the United States require helmets, even for kids. Florida is one without that law. Have you always worn a helmet? I got stopped by the same state patrol a few times back in like 68. Okay. Yeah, but he always let me go. I don't know. I, as if a, you're filming me, we're going to have an issue. Okay. What are you dreaming about? <laughs> Not you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm in love. <laughs> so are we. Go. Go. Bikini-clad babes were strutting their stuff in most bars. A dancer named Melanie told me the money she makes here in a week pays for a semester of nursing studies at her community college. In the summer, Melanie works at the world's largest motorcycle rally in Sturgis, South Dakota. Do you always ride with that? Uh, really? Yeah. On the highway and everything? Yeah, about 40, 42,000 miles with this so far. Uh, yeah. From here to California, Vancouver, Canada, 
Uh, DC Sturgis. Wow. Yeah, that's commitment. Out there. That's commitment. That's for him. I'm not sure. Heading back to my van, I heard a ruckus outside a rowdy bar. A shirtless guy was being bullied and a woman was trying to protect him. Everything seemed to quiet down when some new guy ran over with a bandana over his face like a bandit. Then boom, oh! he sucker punched him. The shirtless guy hit the sidewalk hard and was bleeding. I can't remember the last time I saw a bar fight. Scared the hell out of me. He got sucker punched. He doesn't want to talk about He got totally sucker punched. He wasn't in a fight. He wasn't in a fight. Somebody came over from this bar. I told the cops, I have video. They said, thanks, but this stupidity goes on all the time in this party town. And he won't press charges. After filming the fight, fear flooded in that I could be a target too, with all my cameras and my white hair. So I hit the road, Jack. It's my second day in Winnebago land. I'm van man now and slept great again up in the, the loft, my, my one bedroom apartment. I'm the captain of my little van land. When I drive, everything's just like floating around. It's like I have to figure out how to organize like being on a boat. The street violence and fear stayed with me like a hangover. Even now, it makes me sick to my stomach that somebody would do that, I mean, because it, it, it seemed more like they were just wanted to beat somebody up. Anyway, it's just stuck with me. It's really just a, you know, I'm, I can be really naive sometimes. Grace Chapel Baptist Church, which had a, literally had a cardboard, a cardboard sign to it. So now I'm back on paved road. When you look into the forest, it's just these rows of straight, 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 all about 30, 40 feet high. What immediately came to mind is that beautiful song, Tall trees in Georgia, they're only on my mind. They last for, <coughs> they last forever. <coughs> Obviously, I need to warm up my voice. Tall trees. They grow so I joined an RV club called Boondockers, a national community of RV owners who let travelers park in their driveways for a night or two. We connect traveling RVers with locals who welcome you to stop overnight on their private property for free. There she is. Uh, real RV folks, been retired a long time. They also bicycle. Real nice. There's some interesting points of view uh, around China that I've never heard before. Oh. Hey, hi! Hey. <laughs> Sorry I'm so late. I'm just enjoying your neighborhood. Good, good. I was, I was chilly last night. All campers are like that. Yeah. Hard, they don't hold the temperature like a house. Yeah, a yeah, yeah. And, and, and down below is real warm, but up top is... Yeah. It's, 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 it
it's really cheap to put in any camper. It's called reflective. Oh, yeah, yeah. That? It makes a world of difference. Come over here. I'll show you that. My camper is remodeling. Remodeling. I love it. That's what campers do. They go on the set. <laughs> they say, oh, we need this, this, and this. Change right. We come back and remodel. Get a little doodad here yeah, and a little doodad something. Doodad there. We go on a trip, tweak yeah. it, whatever. We yeah, do yeah. that all the time. Yeah. And once we get it perfect, we're tired of it, and we're ready to sell it and get another one. <laughs> So this is the material. Yeah, put up Velcro yep. in each corner of your window. It's called Reflectix. You buy it yep. in a big roll, cut it with regular scissors. Yep. Hey, I'm going to show you my bike. Okay. So we don't really bike on the roads very much. Yeah, right? you do the paths, the trails. Yeah. Into bikes. I mean, do you know different styles? Yeah, sure. Just an old British bike? I think so. And see, this one's sort of halfway between just a road bike uh -huh. and... Um, it's got bigger tires and it's got a little uh, shock absorption. This company specializes uh, second largest bicycle manufacturer in the world. They're out of California. Not if I pick it up. I no, no, no. Hey, oh, heavy it, got, wow, I got, nice. Well, I got full water too. Oh. Hey, we were talking last night about my China project. Okay. And yeah. so this is the, the television series that's uh, now on uh, Chinese television. So I've spent most of the last three years in China, nice. and the, my whole COVID experience is in China. Have you been to Asia? I never have. No, okay. I've never been to Asia. So you've obviously never been to China. But you said something interesting to me that I hadn't heard before, that um, the idea that the Communist Party might want to come to the United States? Well, that's 20 or 30 years from now. My philosophy or my feeling is the Communist Party, not the people. Yeah, yeah. They want to rule the world. Okay. So I think they'll try to, you know, the biggie would be between Russia and China one mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. This is just real of future stuff. Yeah, okay. And I'm saying the U.S. better be careful about dealing with the communist china mm -hmm. yeah now we're getting in bed we've been in bed with them for so long and now well, we, we sure have yeah they, they provide everything you buy from china yeah yeah and we, what happens and we probably owe them more money than anybody else it's a fine balance the u.s now has to walk in its relationship right with china it's a difficult the communist party yeah I, th I think there's been a wake-up call in the last three four five years that that um and the idea, you know, so, you know, talk to some folks and, and they say, you know, well, you know, China s stole our jobs. And, uh, you know, I think more often uh, American corporations sold your job, buddy. Yeah. They so, wanted to get cozy with China back then. Now they, I should say the Chinese government now, because I'm sure the Chinese people are beautiful people. And well, that's, that's my experience because I started going there in the 80s. Right. And so I'm sort of seeing what's changed and one of the things... To, to me, that was much more constant is the culture, the people, the generosity. And so that's part of what I'm pursuing here is that experience firsthand right. to remind myself and other people, right. you know, that's, that's really the soul of America. Yeah. It's, been, it's been fun. I've been, enjoyed the experience. Their kindness, RV advice, and distinctly American worldview were uplifting to me, but not exactly boondocking. My next boondockers welcome experience was friendly, educational, and a bit odd. I met this sweet couple who had retired from the U.S. Navy. We had a great conversation talking about uh, the Constitution, spirituality. Then we sang Amazing Grace together. <laughs> I'm just so, I'm touched and reassured that even though we have a very different points of view, we were able to have a fabulous visit together and connect people to people. And that's what I want to focus on. Not sure exactly how to do it. They talked about being constitutional coaches and showed me videos about something called Patriot Academy. Patriot Academy is a great place for young people to start. Something happens when you sign the Declaration of Independence. Frankly, I didn't pay much attention to the videos. When these kids put their name under the 56 original signers, they are pledging their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Until a year later, those demure Navy retirees revoked their permission 
to be in my documentary series. <laughs> Curious as to why, I researched Patriot Academy, and this is what I found out. You see, we don't live in a time of peace anymore. For too long, we have coasted through the responsibility of freedom rather than taking it to heart. Patriot Academy was so important to the retired couple because they said, we can't defend our rights if we don't even know what they are. Hey friends, I'm Rick Green, America's Constitution Coach. And they spoke heroically about its founder, Rick Green. Now, you may be someone that loves America and loves America's Constitution. You may be someone that really questions America. Maybe you're angry at America for whatever reason it might be. My question for you is what are you gonna do about it? Welcome to Constitution Alive right here in Independence Hall. And we are in the room where both the Constitution and the Declaration were adopted. Philly is my hometown, so I've been to Independence Hall lots of times. People were so hungry for truth, and God had prepared us at that moment to teach the very same things we've been teaching for years, but to a new hungry audience. We were growing at like 400% a year. Hundreds of thousands of people going through the courses, millions of people listening to us on all these outlets. Holy moly, this is a big business. There is a window of opportunity right now for millions of people to be converted to the biblical principles of liberty. Biblical citizens sounds like Green is trying to nail Christianity to the U.S. Constitution. It is so good to see God's people coming together. Don't, didn't you miss that fellowship? Oh my goodness, just to get to see each other, smile at each other, hug each other, pray for each other, lay hands on each other. Man, we need it so bad. I'm so he sounds like a preacher now, but I get this fellowship stuff from the gospel choirs I've sung in for years. Community matters. So I was stunned when the next video preached gun safety, AR-17 target practice, and Patriot Academy branded guns to the biblical citizens. Constitutional defense program, they call it, and those sweet Navy retirees never mentioned it. And then all of a sudden you get a knock on the door. Give me wallet, I'm gonna kill you! All right, scenario is over in one shot. Door-to-door -door combat training strikes me as more suitable for paramilitary than for biblical citizens. It's time for a change. It's time for true patriots to rise. It's time for patriots to take up the torch of freedom. I wondered if biblical citizen patriots like my Navy retirees are also the first Christian nationalists I've met. So I dig deeper. The phrase white Christian nationalism has been in the headlines quite a bit recently, but what does it really mean? Both preach our rights come from the biblical notions of God and promote the tenuous supposition the U.S. was founded as a Christian nation. Patriot Academy wants to, quote, bring our nation back to founding principles. Christian nationalists who number more than 25 million go a step further. They're crusading for the transformation of U.S. culture, education, and government to become primarily Christian. Though 60% of Americans identify as Christians, many feel they're victims of persecution and increasingly motivated by fear, so they're preparing for battle. Honestly, just sharing this information scares the hell out of me. I moved almost to tears that I am able and willing to explore this. Even though I don't know what I'm doing, as a filmmaker, as a, a, a band guy, um, and I'm worried about my finances, no. I'm doing it. Because I think it's so incredible. In the next episode, we go to Washington, D.C., ride with the People's Convoy protesters, see the Civil War from Lincoln's perspective, and pay our respects at Arlington National Cemetery. Hey, glad you're here. I hope you enjoyed the journey so far. And like, subscribe, and contribute. Let us know how you feel about it. Because there's a lot more episodes, and your input would be really, really helpful. So, come along. Oh, my beautiful country. Woohoo!
Woo, here we go, ride on.